Hello science people. Today we're going to talk about the process of osmosis. And so osmosis is the process of water moving from an area of high concentration of water to an area of low concentration of water. So water wants to go from lots of water to less water. Now in most science textbooks, they show osmosis by showing a jar of water and a blood cell. But I think it's kind of hard for us to relate to a jar of water and a blood cell. So instead, we're going to use fish because most of us, we understand fish. And so I want you to be aware that what I'm about to show you and talk to you about is hyperbolic. It's an extreme exaggeration of what fish normally have to go through, but I'm going to do it in order to help exaggerate and show the process of osmosis. Okay, so let's talk about two fish. So I have fish one, and I do not claim to be an artist in any way. And we have fish two. Now, there's a difference between these two fish. The difference is one of these fish lives in the ocean and one of them lives in a lake. Okay? And so over here, we're going to call this one ocean fish and we're going to call this one lake fish. And as you know, an ocean is salt water and a lake is fresh water. And so these fish have to deal with d different levels of osmosis. Because again, it's osmosis is water going from high concentration water to low concentration. And so the ocean is around three and a half percent salt. And our lake should be zero percent salt. And so we will say fish is fish and our fish is one percent salt. Whether you're fresh water or you are salt water, you are still just a fish. So 1% salt. So in this situation, the ocean fish has more water inside it than the ocean. Now you're like, what? No, 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 no. The ocean is huge. How is there more water in the fish than in the ocean? Well, we're talking about concentration of water. Because if we look inside the fish, if he's 1% salt, let's assume that he's 99% water. And looking at the ocean, the ocean is going to be 96.5% water. So just by looking at these percentages, the fish is a higher percentage of water than the ocean. And so remember, water wants to go from high to low. So in our ocean situation, what's going to happen is the water is going to want to leave the fish and go into the ocean. Now looking at our freshwater lake, our freshwater is going to be a hundred percent water. There's no salt in it. And again, our fish is 99% water. And so in this situation, water is going to want to go from the lake, into the fish because again it's going from high to low high concentration of water to a lower concentration of water so a hundred percent water is going to move to the 99 percent water in the ocean you have the 99 percent water wanting to push out of the fish into the 96.5 percent uh, water let me make sure i write these as water so we don't get confused and so osmosis is always, is always present when we look at life and cells and fish and things like that. And so fish, luckily, they have a tough waterproof skin that will help them fight osmosis. But let's pretend that these fish were cells and they did not have this tough skin. So what would be happening is this ocean fish would have to constantly be drinking water because the water is leaving through his skin into the ocean. So he'll be constantly losing water due to osmosis. And this happens to cells. And so the fish will have to constantly drink water. And the fish won't have to urinate because the water is leaving through its skin. Now, if we look at the fish in the lake, he's gonna constantly absorb water through his skin because the water is rushing in. So he will not have to drink water 
the old-fashioned way because water will be going into his skin through osmosis. Now this is if the fish do not have waterproof skin that help protect them from osmosis. And so when water is moving out of something, okay, so when water is moving out of something, we say that that something is going to be hypotonic, and the place that it is going is going to be hypertonic. So let's talk about what these words mean, hypertonic and hypotonic. And so hyper means more. Hypo means less. And tonic means pressure. Just like tonic water is pressurized water, right? It's carbonated. And so hypertonic means more pressure, hypotonic means less. And so in this case, because the water is pushing against the ocean, the ocean in this sense is hypertonic. It is feeling the pressure of the water leaving the fish. The fish is losing pressure because the water is leaving its body, making the fish hypotonic. In our lake situation, the, the lake is the one that is hypotonic and the fish is hypertonic because the water is pushing into the fish. The fish is feeling the pressure, hypertonic. And so a lot of my students, they don't bother learning the hypotonic, hypertonic as pressure. They just think that hypotonic means a higher percentage of water, hypertonic means less percentage of water. And if that helps you, then sure, go right ahead. But just know that hypotonic means less pressure, hypertonic means more pressure, and the whatever is receiving the water is feeling the pressure, hypertonic. Whatever is losing the water is losing pressure, hypotonic. Now there's another situation. Now let's, for our situ other situation, use a crab. So here we got a crab. And this crab is going to have a different strategy than those fish. The crab is going to be 3.5% salt because the ocean is 3.5% salt. And so the crab doesn't want to deal with being hypertonic or hypotonic. Instead, the crab is even with its environment. We call this isotonic. Isotonic. Iso means same, so same pressure. What this means is water is always flowing, and so the water is flowing in the crab at the same rate it is flowing out of the crab, so isotonic. So whenever the pressure is the same, or the percentage of water is the same, we call it isotonic. And this is an introduction to osmosis.